Hello, and welcome to our latest episode, New Year, New Future, and Learning from the Past. Just like Elevate, this program is dedicated to making sure everyone has affordable heat, cooling, and water in their home, no matter who they are or where they live. In tonight's episode, we've added new faces from the Elevate team to help share more news you can use, including digging into a compelling report on your water bills, consumer tips on saving money during the winter seasons, questions from viewers like you, and a step-by-step -step guide to understanding your utility bill, hosted by my colleague, Akosawa Gooseby. Our amazing guests include Raisha Sony, Comptroller, City of Chicago, Anthena Gore, Strategist, Water Programs at Elevate, Vitia Hill, Community Resource Coordinator at Elevate, and joining us again, Jose Hernandez, Senior Associate, Community Resources at Elevate. First up, we'll talk to Anthea Gore and Reshma Soni about findings from the City of Chicago Water Affordability Analysis, a new report about their work around water affordability and equity. Water affordability is a growing concern. Over the past decade, the average residential water rate went up by almost 80% in Northeastern Illinois, and many households will soon find their water bills unaffordable if water rates continue to rise at the expected pace. Comptroller Sony was appointed in 2019 by Mayor Lori Lightfoot. She is a veteran financial manager of the city of Chicago and Cook County. In her previous work as chief financial officer to the Chicago Department of Aviation, she oversaw financial operations for one of the world's busiest airports comprised of O'Hare and Midway International Airport, so the airport system. Those were big roles then, and she's playing a critical role now. So glad to have you both on the program, and thank you so much for giving us your time. Now, Ms. Sony, it's a pleasure to have you join us for the conversation. I'm gonna call you Reshma, if that's all right. Thank you. That's perfect. Very <laughs> good. And I'd like to just start by asking you, to tell us, what does a comptroller do? What's, what's your job all about? It's a big one. So, and thank you so much for giving the opportunity for me to present over here. Um, the role of comptroller, you know, fundamentally is holding the purse strings of the city, right? We are a fiduciary, uh, I, or at least I have a fiduciary responsibility to make sure that the funds coming in and out of the city are being used for the proper purpose, for what uh, has been budgeted for, for what the taxpayers have the understanding of what the funds will be uh, used for and making sure that we're doing that in the most efficient way as possible. But the role for City of Chicago for Comptroller and the Comptroller's office is much, much more than just bringing in funds and actually paying out funds, which are very important roles. We also handle the revenue operations, which include utility billing, which we'll be talking about our water sewer, uh, water sewer tax and garbage fees. We also deal with revenue collection, um, enforcement over here, as well as we're doing different types of uh, reforms to help our residents and businesses to get back into compliance. We also handle um, all the benefits for the city employees, whether it be payroll, health care benefits, risk management, which is our insurance risk management, uh, workers' compensation here as well. Um, so we, in accounting and financial reporting, which is the tools that we use to be able to um, report out to all the not only our taxpayers, but to our bondholders and various different entities of how our financial picture is. That is a lot. I was going to say it's like holding the purse strings or the bank account at home, but it's like doing that for many households in, in, in your position. And Thena, it's so great to have you here. It's a, a new year. We're working remotely, so I don't get to see you. So this is a pleasure for me. You've recently changed roles within Elevate. Talk a little bit about what you do before we dig into the report. Thanks so much, Sylvia. It's great to see you as well. I do miss seeing you around the office along with my other colleagues. Um, so I am now a strategist on the water programs team at Elevate. I was previously a project manager on the community planning team. So I'm bringing over very strong project management skills and community engagement uh, tools and tactics that we would need to really be able to tackle our water affordability portfolio, which I am now overseeing at Elevate. So that is briefly 
what I do now, and we'll talk more about what water affordability means and what that means for Chicago in this report later on. Well, it looks like we've got the right people in the right positions. And let's dig into this particular report. It is the uh, Chicago Water Affordability Analysis, named very clearly for what it does. It's a deep report. I'd love to know what your work was around the water affordability analysis. And Reshma, I'll start with you. Thank you so much, Sylvia. So, you know, with the report itself, the report actually gives us a way to solidify a lot of the things we know. First of all, working with Elevate as a partner, um, Elevate is the, it has the same goals as the city has. We want to make sure that everyone has reliable access to water at an affordable cost. And doing this kind of analysis helps us to come up with those solutions that are focused with getting people access. And that's really important, not only to Elevate, but to us as a city and such a large city that serves um, over 2.6 million people. Um, Elevate is a great trusted partner with us and working with them in this report, um, what we had done is provided the data, the underlying data and the overall process of how we actually do billing for them to understand you know, what are the different mechanics and how should we analyze the data. Uh, Elevate has not only been a partner with us in this report, but other things as well. Like uh, most recently we've been working on reconnecting water to those households who don't have water. Um, and uh, Elevate has been a great partner. So we have this relationship, not only through this report, but many other things that we're trying to do to help residents get water and get, get it affordably. Um, so working with Elevate um, and looking at the data, having another set of eyes who are subject matter experts uh, to be able to analyze the da data and do it objectively, a third party resource for us um, was the main goal and really how we participated with Elevate in this report. Well, that's outstanding, and thank you for your kind words. And Anthena, you stepped into a, a really big role, bringing your, your city planning and policy uh, project management skills with you. Briefly, what was your role? Absolutely. Um, so my role was to come in initially as a project manager, and I actually worked on this report for about a year before assuming the role of strategist. So it was a great opportunity to just learn more about how water service works in Chicago. But we did collaborate with Metropolitan Planning Council on this report. They have been a great partner. They helped us with a lot of the qualitative research, really the heart of the matter where people not only from Chicago, but around the country and other cities that are also looking at water affordability issues, how they are uh, taking these things in before COVID. We'll also be doing this to reflect back on what happened during COVID in the future as well. But again, just having a great collaborative partner uh, through MPC to stretch our wings a bit and ask more in-depth questions was great. Uh, Elevate did a lot of the quantitative research. So we took the billing data that the city provided and did a full analysis. And a lot of that information revealed that the water debt really is the most important issue to come forward that residents are facing right now. So again, I think the, the biggest thing for me was being able to come in as project manager and work collaboratively with the city, with Metropolitan Planning Council, and with residents and water advocates to really bring this all together. Yeah, it is a touch point for so many people. It's, it's key to life. And it's wonderful to hear about the detailed work that you did to set this up. Let's get into the report and why, why did you choose to share this now? Uh, why did the city pick this time, Reshma? So overall, you know, the city and this administration has been concentrating on bringing equity in many different areas. And we know that for um, fees and charges and fines, this is an area that we really need to figure out equity um, across the city. And so our goal and the mayor's goal when she came in was, first of all, ensuring that we're not doing any kind of water shutoffs um, in, due to the fact that we're, people are not paying. We knew that there was an affordability issue. So we didn't want to penalize people for their basic right of having water. 
I think going toward that and working with Elevate, and we've been working with Elevate from before the pandemic actually started to say that we know that one thing we can do is not penalize people for not being able to pay. But then how can we create and bring affordability? What tools do we need to use? Um, and so right now is the time that we felt is extremely important um, as people are going through so much of hardship, not only pre-COVID, um, but now with COVID, it sort of exasperates. And uh, we, we felt this is a good time to bring out this data and show people that you know, we are aware of the situations and we're taking steps with Elevate. And as I mentioned before, the partnership is so strong. We have aligned goals of bringing accessibility and affordability. Um, and both of those areas are what we're working on with Elevate. So bringing this at this time, we felt, was a very important to be transparent with what's there and for also to give us a focused view on what do we need to do to be able to fix this issue and be able to bring um, affordability and equity across the city. Well, for both of you, let's dig in from the report. What's the city thinking about the future of water affordability? What, what's the process going to be? What, what are you going to do? And I'll stay with you, Reshma. So, um, you know, currently we have a program called UBR. It's the Utility Billing Relief Program. This is a very innovative program for us. Um, this, this program started last year in June of 2020, or I guess now I would say a year and a half ago because we're in 2022. Um, but the program is bringing the ability for people to come into compliance um, if they have past due debt. And even if they don't have past due debt, but their current water bills are high, water and water sewer and water sewer tax bills, if they meet um, the threshold, the income threshold, which is 200% of the federal poverty threshold for a household, um, then they can enroll in this program. Um, this program is actually modeled off of LAHEAP. Many people might be That's right. familiar with that um, for the low, um, low income um, heating and the energy program that's out there that is run through CEDA and um, CEDA is C-E-D-A. So the, a lot of individuals we saw were already enrolled in this program, getting relief on other types of utilities. And we wanted to bring that relief over here. If you're already enrolled in that program with a CEDA, you could automatically be enrolled in this program by just filling out a simple form. But also we know that there are individuals out there who might not be eligible for LAHEAP, not because of income, but for other uh, reasons. They might not have the right immigration status. They might be um, unreported. And we wanted to provide this tool for everybody who needs it as a homeowner. Um, so we feel that, that this program is already helping us. Um, on top of that, we just recently um, have been working with the state, with CEDA, and this is actually a program that started with HHS, and it's called LIWAP, mm -hmm. which is the Low Income uh, Water um, Accessibility Program. And so what this program is, is very similar to what we already did on the UBR side, but expands it even further. So with the UBR program, we have households that are either single family or two flat, metered or non-metered, who could be eligible if they meet the income criteria. With this additional program that we have coming on board with LAWI, um, that gives us access to any type of household. So it doesn't have to be only a two flat, it could be a three flat. And this data, what we're going through right now and the analysis that Elevate did um, actually helped us to, to even further uh, realize the importance that it's not only the single family and the two flat homes, but those individuals who might own multi-unit uh, um, buildings that may need that as well because they might not be able to rent it out. Um, they might not be able to rent the building out. They might have just their own household living in different uh, units and they still need that affordability. So we feel that that program is going to help us. In addition, um, you know, uh, along with affordability, we know what's important is that people need access to disposable income to pay for their utilities. And we're looking at other types of reforms out there as well in our fines and fees um, aspect to see that how we can create more affordability in other areas where residents may owe money to the city. And that can free up some dollars for them to be able to spend on things like the water um, their water bills or utility or just you know, needs that they have. Well, um, Reshma, we have so many details in what you've said. It's a font of information. HS, HS uh, uh, what is it? Health and Human HHS. Services. Yes. There seems to be 
a plan, if I can synthesize this a bit, to follow the success of a program like LIHEAP to bring that kind of service to water. And it yes. looks like you're looking holistically uh, on the, the fines and fees side to help free people's money up so that they can afford to pay their bills. I'm going to come to Anthena. Time goes by so quickly in these important conversations. Anthena, how can you further uh, share what this means to, to regular folks? Uh, what does it mean to someone who uh, may own a family home or their generational wealth? Absolutely, Sylvia. That is one of the takeaways. I think the biggest takeaways that we're seeing from the report is affordability means looking at the cost of the service that is being provided system-wide, really. So what's happening at the household level, what's happening at the city level with the infrastructure and other things like that. And then also taking a look at, well, how much can people really pay to support that infrastructure? That water is critical to life. Water is life. We absolutely need to have the infrastructure in place in order to get water across a vast city. So when we are thinking about those things, it's important to also understand that there is a water debt issue across the entire city. It is not just uh, segmented off to the lowest income households. It hits them the most severe, absolutely. But if we're seeing owners of three and four flat buildings seeing rising water costs, and not being able to hold on to those buildings for various reasons. Um, one of them being, you know, the composition of the water bill, the taxes may go up, they may have incurred penalties and fines. It does put a, a stop on folks who are probably just getting into real estate and maybe they're trying to build generational wealth for their family. Um, so having that in the front of my mind, especially, is important when we're thinking about how do we address water affordability across the city um, for those lowest income folks that are unable to make any payments up to the folks who may have been able to hold on for a while, but that situation has been exacerbated by COVID especially. Well, thank you. I know that there's, you inherited grandma's house, maybe you inherited, inherited her water bill. So this Chicago uh, water affordability analysis is on the way to being a solution. But we've got a uh, consumer question for both of you as one of our new segments. And I believe Anthony Powell, also from Elevate, has that question for you. Uh, welcome, Anthony. Uh, can you share your question, please? Hi. Um, so a resident says, I'm constantly worried about my utility bills, especially my water bill. How does this water affordability program directly affect me? And I think that's a great question. Um, and this, you know, pivots back to us trying to do more outreach, right? We have this program, as I mentioned before, called UBR. It's the Utility Billing Relief Program. And uh, honestly, this program is groundbreaking for us. I just want to give some stats on how it's helped people. And then we can just talk about uh, a little bit of logistics, because I do want people to know how they can access this program and easy ways for doing it. Uh, we don't want people to get scared of paperwork, you know, I always hear residents or even businesses saying, oh, I have to deal with the city. That means I have to fill out like a stack of papers. We've made this process very streamlined. But since this program started a year and a half ago, we have over 17,000 enrollments to date. It's over 8 million in debt that has been forgiven, an additional 8 million um, in savings from rate reductions. And we'll talk about that. And the average amount that's forgiven per household is $1,000, which is huge. Um, so the, this is the forgiven debt. This is not even the, the amount that you're paying now that is only half of what you would have paid if you were not in the program. And 93% of our customers are successful in graduating um, after one year of the program. So you know, just to talk about that a bit, um, this program, what it does is that if you are able to meet the income uh, threshold and the household threshold, which is you know, the single family and two flats for now, you can enroll into the UBR program. If you pay your water sewer and water sewer tax bills at 50% on time for the next 12 months, 
any old debt you had, any past due debt that you had that was, we would have set that aside. And after one year of completion of the program, that old debt gets waived off. So let's say, uh, for example, you had $2,000 of past due debt, you sign up for the program today, and your bill normally is $50 a month, it will get to cut down to $25 a month. You pay that $25 a month on time for 12 months, and that 2000 of debt that was past due gets waived off, including fines and penalties. The great thing about this program is just recently, City Council approved this program to be permanent. It was a pilot program. And so now you can register every year for the program. And as long as you meet the income threshold and um, the household requirements, you can be in the program as long as you need to. So it's ongoing relief. Um, it's available on our website. You can go to Chicago, www.chicago.gov slash UBR. Um, CEDA, as I mentioned, has over 40 sites that you can go to if you want to have somebody help fill it out. Um, we also have um, you know, a number that someone can call if they want. And our aldermanic offices are very familiar with the program as well. So you can always go to your aldermanic office and they'll put you in touch. We want this program to expand. And um, Reshma, really let me just ask you again, would you say the name of the program and the acronym one last time in the brief time we have left? Absolutely. So it's called the Utility Billing Relief Program, or UBR. Got it. Thank you so much, and thank you, Anthony, for that consumer question. Time goes by. We have to have you on again and to hear how this has worked. But Reshma, this is a large and in-depth report. You've done a great job of, of summarizing it. But what's the key takeaway that you want Chicago consumers and others to keep in mind? What's the last thing you want to say? I think there's a lot of resources that are available. We want to do our best to get those resources to you. And what I would request is to find out more about the program, but tell others about it as well. You have family members, friends, your neighbor that may need this uh, support. And having something like $1,000 being waived off or paying half of your bill means that you have that money to use for something else that's equally important, if not more. Uh, we really want people to get into this program. Water affordability is important for all of us. And we'd love for you to help us to uh, get the word out. Thank you so much. And Anthena, your last words. Sure. Um, this report was definitely a labor of love for the folks at Elevate. We care very much. Um, so, so back to what you said at the top of the program, our mission is to make sure that folks have affordable heat, power, water in their homes. And for us specifically on the water team, making sure that that water is safe and affordable drinking water. So Elevate is also here as a resource if you are having trouble with emergency plumbing repair or water infrastructure needs, if you need help, uh, you can reach out to us at Elevate. We are a resource at info at elevatenp.org. Thank you. We appreciate your work and your candor in sharing information about this important report. We hope to see you another time. Have a great day. That was great. Thank you so much for joining us, Reshma and Anthena. We look forward to our audience implementing this vital information. We'll be right back after this. Later, Akosawa Gooseby will step in to host a segment of our programming to help you understand your electric utility bill. But first, Vitia Hill and Jose Hernandez from Elevate's Community Resource Team will join us to share winter tips to save energy and money during this season. Hey guys, good to see you. Hello. Jose, hey, Jose you've been on the program before. Welcome back. Thank you. The Tia, or as we call you, Tia, tell us a little bit about your role on the community resource team. Well, thank you for having me. I'm excited. My, my job as a community resource coordinator is to create relationships with different organizations and communities and educating folks about how Elevate can provide resources, and um, especially for communities that need it the most. Thank you. And we've had our first big storm this winter, so winter is officially here, and it's not fun. 
Why is it important to be mindful of energy efficiency at this time? And I'll come to you, Tia. Tell us your thoughts. Um, and it's, it's um, any, any time there, first of all, we're all consumers and we all use electricity. Um, so, and especially in times where um, there is a high demand, where it's uh, um, extreme uh, weather times, you know, winter or summer, um, where the, the grid or what it takes for the electricity to be powered to your home, um, there's a huge demand on that. So it's important for us to pay attention to um, how we can be more responsible around how we use our electricity. And um, because what happens is when we put too much pressure on the grid or how we get our electricity, we have to use other sources of power and that doesn't affect the environment. So when we do make conscious choices in our home, it actually does make a difference in the environment. And one of the things I've learned, Tia and Jose, is people care about the environment. They also care about their pocketbook. Jose, that same question for you, why it's important, but maybe a little bit more from the consumer perspective. Right, definitely. And I think one of the things to note is that unlike the summer, uh, a lot of our homes are heated in the winter by natural gas. And unlike electricity, as Vatia mentioned, natural gas is a lot more expensive um, and it's also a lot more volatile both to the environment and your wallet. So it's important as a consumer to really be efficient in your home so that you can protect both the environment and save, save a bit. And also there's a lot of practices that help the efficiency of your home during the winter that also impact um, the health of your home and also the longevity of your home. So that's important too. Well, let's talk about that, Jose. What's the easiest thing residents can do right now to save energy and save money? Right, the two biggest things are actually insulation and air sealing. Um, I like to think of it as you took all those little air leaks in your windows and your doors and your outlets even, and you put them all together, that's kind of like having a huge hole in the side of your house that's kind of just yeah. letting all this heated air out. So it's really important as a consumer to, to find those air leaks and seal them up. An easy way to do that is they sell DIY kits. You know, they even sell them at the dollar store with adhesive tape that you just kind of stick to the window or maybe find these holes along uh, your window seals and even your door seals. And that makes a really big difference, not only to your efficiency, but also the comfort of your home. It's really important to understand that part of weatherization and making your home more efficient is also making sure that you're comfortable in your home. Thank you so much. It gets right back to our mission. And what are some of the programs that people can tap into to help them in need, Tia? We have a multi-family energy savings program. And if you have a property that's two units or more, we come in and we give you a free assessment and we give you a report to see how much, um, what you need to do to have your home be more energy efficient. And with that report, we can help you look at different rebates, incentives, and even grants to um, not only, you know, make your home more energy efficient, but save you money. Love it. Thank you so much. And I'll ask both of you, what are you looking forward to and what are the big lessons? So we're at the start of a new year as we record this. What are you looking forward to and what did you learn last year? And I'll start with you, Tia. What I learned is that, I mean, we're all in the same boat here. We're all consumers. We're all residents whether you own a big property or you are in an apartment like me. <laughs> and um, as long as we stay communicating with each other, I think we can get it together and get an understanding of how we all can make a difference. And it could just be cutting your lights off for a little bit, changing your LED lights, you know, um, unplugging things. I mean, those little things actually do make a difference. And as long as you keep that conversation going, I learned that people are actually interested. They think that they have to be way more than they really don't have to right now. And what are you looking forward to for the year? I'm looking forward to continuing these conversations and I'm excited to get people excited. Well, you do that very well. We'll love to have you back and thank you, thank you. for your help behind the scenes with the program. Jose, what about you? Biggest lessons learned and what do you look forward to in 2022? Uh, my biggest lesson learned was definitely the importance of connections, especially during these trying times of the pandemic. Um, during this last year, the 
the meetings in person were very little and far in between, but they were definitely cherished by me. And I think I was able to make some really good connections whenever that happened. Um, and going into the year, you know, I really hope to, as Vatia said, continue making those connections and helping the people who really need it most and, and connecting them with resources. Well, thank you both. I look forward to utilizing these tips as we tread into this Chicago winter myself. I'm glad to know that even the dollar store is selling the, the tools you need to, to block out the, the, the wind in your home. And uh, as I say goodbye to you, I'm going to turn over the host chair to your colleague, Akosua Goosby, to give us the 411 on how to understand your utility bill right after we watch a fresh video on a topic I know you'll enjoy. The smart grid. We don't see it, but it's hard to imagine life without it. We use it on a daily basis. Like Roots, it holds the foundation of our everyday living solutions. The smart grid is our system of wires, meters, and transformers that work together to power our homes and businesses. We connect with the smart grid when we plug in our devices or turn on the light switch. Before the smart grid, our traditional electricity grid made it really difficult to monitor our daily energy consumption. Our electricity grid is a lot older than you may have thought. It was developed in the 1890s and it evolved along with our ever-changing technology. The modern grid is a lot more in tune with the devices that we use every day. It contains over 1,000 electricity generating units, over 1 million megawatts of generating capacity, and is connected to more than 300,000 transmission lines. The smart grid has totally reshaped the way that we live with its two-way communication, enhanced efficiency, reduced power outages, waste reduction, inaccurate bill estimates, new pricing plans, and its adaptation to renewable energy. It was so easy to be unaware of the energy that we were wasting and just being totally ignorant to how we were hurting our planet. Our up-to-date smart grid has allowed utility companies like ComEd and Ameren become creative with how they want to make a difference in the environment. They've developed pricing plans so that consumers can cut back on their energy and get rewarded for it. It has helped us accomplish a lot when it comes to preserving the environment and enhancing overall quality of life. Reach out to Elevate if you have any questions at all about the smart grid, um, the different pricing programs, or anything else that we do. And we'd be more than happy to give you the information that you need. I love our videos and I give a big thanks to Dylan and to Amrit and Adrian and Alex and everybody at Elevate who make those videos possible. But now, as promised, we have a special guest segment and here's my co-host, Akosua Goosby. Thanks, Akosua. Thank you, Sylvia. That was a great video. Hello, I'm Akosua Goosby and I'm happy to host this special segment. I'm here to share how to identify key features of your utility bill, particularly if you live in what we consider ComEd territory. If you live in or around the Chicagoland area, then your electric utility is delivered by ComEd. Meaning no matter your utility supplier, your energy will always be delivered by ComEd and your bill will say ComEd. Here we have a sample bill. The highlighted area in green denotes where you can find your supplier. Often we hear consumers say they have ComEd when in fact they are currently enrolled with an alternative supplier. Alternative suppliers will usually sign you up with the promise of lower rates than the utility provider themselves. This can be very enticing, especially now that we enter the winter months in Chicago and utility costs can be rather high. However, what many people may not know is that the contract that they have signed has an expiration date upon which their rates can double or even triple in some cases from the original amount quoted. As we continue to look at the sample bill, we see how much of this consumer's bill is going to the supplier and which amount is for delivery. At the top, we can see the total amount of the bill. 
This amount may or may not seem like a lot. The important thing to know is that the number can fluctuate due to your supplier, but the amount you pay for delivery stays the same. And now let's go to Anthony for another consumer question. Anthony? Hi, Akosawa. Hey, so, Anthony. Hi. <laughs> a resident said, I recently found out that I am with an alternative supplier. How do I get out of my contract and switch to ComEd? Or would it be better to switch to another supplier? So what I tell consumers, that's a great question, by the way. Thank you, Anthony. Um, what I usually typically tell consumers is that nine times out of 10, it'll be best to just stay with your deliverer, which is ComEd. And if you're staying with ComEd, then you can reach out to one of our partners. Uh, we love working with our partners. We love our partners. And one of our partners is CUB, which stands for the Citizens Utility Board. And their website is citizensutilityboard.org. And what they have, which is really, really great and very, very useful, is uh, a report that has every single alternative supplier in our area and how much they charge, how much their initial rate is, and when it'll uh, change. And then they'll also have supply you with a number you can call in order to make those changes. And if you have any trouble getting out of your contract, there's always somebody at the Citizens Utility Board who can help you make that change. Thanks, Anthony, for that great question. It is really good to know where all the key features are on our bill. And here we have Sylvia again. Thanks, Akosa. It was so good to have you as my uh, guest host on that special segment. Thank you. Absolutely. Had a good, time. good, good. That's what Elevate, we like to work hard in and do good things as we do it. Thanks to today's co host, Akosa Gooseby, and question coordinator Anthony Powell, both from Elevate. And thank you for watching our Elevating Stories of Climate Equity series. We hope this episode has given you some valuable information. And I want to offer a big thanks to our CAN TV crew and the communications and community resource team at Elevate. Getting work done safely during COVID takes extra commitment. And finally, that thanks is doubled for our guests, Reshma Sony, Comptroller for the City of Chicago, Anthea Gore, Strategist, Water Programs at Elevate, Vitia Hill, Community Resource Coordinator at Elevate, and Jose Hernandez, Senior Associate of Community Resources at Elevate. We'll see you next time. Until then, stay well and follow us on social media. I'm Sylvia Ewing. Take care. <music>